Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from The Purple Alphabet. In this video, we are talking about toddler math basics. This is actually a requested video from one of the subscribers, so I wanted to thank you for the video idea. If you have a video idea, let me know down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. A lot of times people say kids do not need to be learning math skills. The thing is, is that they are learning math skills in ways that don't involve just counting or adding. So I'm gonna cover some activities that you can do for some pre-math skills with your toddlers. Let's get started with those ideas. I think what's great about toddler math is that you can do so many different things in so many different ways. It's a lot of fun. And we're really focusing on all of those pre-math skills, which are really early math skills. And the first one would be for sorting. So many different ways to sort. I have pulled these snap cubes. They're from Learning Resources. Everything I mention, I'm gonna try and link down below. So if there's something that you like, you're interested in, then you can look down there and get a link directly to it. So these are math manipulatives and they snap together for us, we're going to be using them for sorting. So when you're working with toddlers, you need to keep in mind their age, if they're oral, if they put things in their mouth. These are probably too small if your child is putting things in their mouth. Use your best discretion. Always, always, always supervise. But I'm going to use these for an example. If you have bigger objects for toddler hands, that could be an option too. I am creating a color sorting activity and I'm going to be careful because these colors are kind of very similar, this orange and this red. So I'm actually going to pull the orange and just use red. Don't want it to be too confusing. And when you're doing these activities, start off easier than you probably would for yourself. So I just got three of each colored cube, put the rest of them away and you can present them all together. Demonstrate it and show your child that you are sorting. In this, in this case, we are sorting by color. So moving all the objects into different piles. If you want, you could also use cups. You can use little boxes to deposit them in. You can use a muffin tin from Dollar Tree. A lot of people do that too. But if you don't have any of that, you can just sort into different piles. Another great way, construction paper, colored construction paper, matching the colors. That's a great thing. You can also find these. These are counters. These are at the dollar store. So I wanted to mention some really affordable options too. And they are counting chips in different colors. You can do the exact same thing with this one. I actually showed in a video. What video was that, you guys? I think it was the preschool busy bins from Dollar Tree. Uh, I can't remember. I'll find it. We'll have to put it up there in the corner. And that's where I got this idea. This little container is also from the Dollar Tree and the stickers are from Dollar Tree and I colored them with markers. And the reason why I did this is for increased fine motor. So toddlers are probably not going to be at this level quite yet. Older toddlers probably will be fine, but the object would be to sort into each colored compartment. And because these are so small, it's excellent for that pincer grasp, that fine motor skill to sort them that way. So just another thing to think about. It's a more advanced skill. Another great way to sort is to sort by object. This guy right here is a bucket that I have already made with different objects and multiples of each object, but you can sort with all kinds of different things that you have around the house. Maybe you have a whole bunch of little cars and you have a whole bunch of animals. You can sort by cars or animals. In this case, this bucket is filled with all animals. This is from um, Lakeshore Learning, by the way. It's called the Sea Animal Counters. They sent it to me for a video a long time ago. Something like this is really great for sorting. And the same thing goes for the colors. If you're starting off sorting, I would get all of the objects the same color. If you're gonna sort by, what do we got here? We got some frogs. I have to dump out some more here. So we'll start off with some frogs that are red, some starfishes that are red, and we have another match in red. Oh, we have some penguins that are red. So the reason why you're doing all the same color, like so that you are just looking for one skill here. You're not trying to just match the colors. And take away all of these guys. And now your activity is matching the like items. As your child gets more skilled and able to do this task, then you can add in more, and you can even add in more color. If you don't have a set like this, that's fine. Look for what you have around your house. You can do cars versus stuffed animals. You can do Legos versus crayons. Whatever items you have, you can find around the house to do this exact same activity. Another option for sorting would be size sorting. This is a bear family counter set that I have had for the longest time and I've gotten so much use out of it because the bears are not only different colors, but they're different sizes. So we have like a large bear and a little baby bear and I think there's a medium bear too. Three different size bears and in each color. So what you can do is compare sizes. If you're starting off with this, definitely start off with just maybe two comparison sizes, maybe the large one 
one and the small one. And then you can sort by size. If you want to get more difficult, you can also sort by size by adding in the third option, small, medium, large. And once again, start with the same color first and then work your way up to multiple colored bears so they can really grasp that concept of size versus color so they know they aren't sorting by color. This brings me to the next early math skill, which is comparison. So using terms like less, lighter, heavier, bigger, smaller, the counting bears are great for those because you can really see the difference. This is a yellow bear and this is a yellow bear, but they are different because this one is bigger. This one is smaller. Which one is smaller? Which one is bigger? You can also bring in a tool like a scale. This scale is from Learning Resources, which we've had for a long time too. It's a primary bucket scale. It comes with these little lids here and these little buckets plus the scale. Let me get it out. All right, you guys, off screen, I just totally destroyed the box. <laughs> trying to get it out for you guys, but I did it. Here it is. This little sky is a really great learning tool, especially in preschool age for exploration because my camera angle here, I'll turn it into the side to show you, but you place the little buckets on each side and then you can use something like these counting bears because they're weighted. We can put a couple of large bears. Two large bears are heavier than one small bear. And you can see that my scales have tips here and you can start experimenting and using those terms as you're playing with the weighted bears of heavier and lighter, or you could use the same, like three bears are heavier than one bear, all while experimenting with the scale. And they love using the scale because they like to see how this tips either way. It's in its most simple form that you can possibly think of, but they are balancing equations without even realizing it. And then you're talking about those math terms that are very simplistic terms that will become more important later when they're doing actual algebra, for example. So this little scale right here is a great exploration tool, even just playing around with it and just experimenting by putting bears in and out is a lot of fun. You can expand past the bears too by using household objects. I think a long time ago, I did a whole video about all kinds of different household objects that you could use for measurement and learning about measurement. That's an old video vintage purple alphabet video, but it still had a lot of good ideas and a lot of it involved measurement with the scale too. Another early math skill would have to be geometry. And I am bringing out this little set and it's a Montessori inspired activity. So these are geometric solids and they are really cool because you can actually fill them up too. They open up and you can fill them up with water, or sand, play and explore with them. There's actually more to the set. I just have some of the basics in this one. And what's great about this is that it's really hands-on learning because they can manipulate the shape. Exploring with these, playing with these in a sensory sand bin is a great introduction to these. You can also buy them solid so that you can't fill them up but you can buy them solid too. This set of Montessori three-part cards can go with it. It was a free printable that I printed out and made where you can match the object to the card. I'm not gonna go over how to do Montessori three-part cards as a lesson because I have a whole video on that. We'll put that up there. <laughs> and so you can get the idea by just, sorry if there's a glare because these are laminated, but you can get the idea about how you would place these cards out and how you can match them up, the shapes to the card. So this is matching. And then you also can graduate to the names because the names are on here and then you can use the three parts here to match up the names. A little bit more advanced, but if they're just toddlers, my kids were doing this when they were really young, matching up the object to the card. And then we also used these as they got a little bit more experienced. I would also recommend blocks, geometric blocks. I don't have any more to show you, but I do have a lot of activities. I have a whole video on pattern blocks and some ideas to use those. Those are a great way to explore geometry geometry. I'll have to link that up in the corner. There's also lots of geometric puzzles that you can find too that are very helpful for just kind of introducing geometry in a really fun hands-on way. This is all Dollar Tree materials right here and this video, yeah, I just did it a couple of weeks ago. I used these flashcards from the Dollar Tree. You don't have to use the flashcards. You can actually uh, make your own just on index cards or whatever, draw shapes on them. And this little card set in here has all the different shapes. 
cubes. And so the activity was to include the cards in here, I guess, and some Dollar Tree phloem. This is just moldable. You can also use Play-Doh or dough to shape the phloem to match the shape on the card. So kind of working with some spatial skills here and recognizing the shape and matching up and making it three dimensional. The next early math skill that I would recommend working on would be patterns. Patterns can be done so many different ways too. What I like to do, because I think it's a really fun hands-on way, is to use some stamps. I've got my whole collection here of the self-inking stamps. You can find these at Dollar Tree all the time, or you can use some other rubber stamps that you might have and just some paper. Find stamps that they like, like there's a robot, there's hearts, got an Easter egg over here, skeleton. When you do these, you just make a pattern. Let's see which way it goes here. Say so I do two eggs, two eggs, and then you can add in another one. Do I have another Easter one? Let's do this heart one and a heart. And so now, and you can do a whole page like this, just pre-do them, or they can make the patterns themselves if they're advanced, but chances are if they're a toddler, this is helping you make the pattern simple. This is actually probably more complicated than it needs to be for a toddler, but then you go hearts, egg, egg, hearts, egg, egg, what comes next? It needs to be much simpler for a toddler. Sorry about that. I was getting carried away with my stamping. And then they can take the stamp that comes next, and that would be the hearts. Pumpkin cat, pumpkin cat, pumpkin pat. So this is an ABA pattern versus an ABBABB pattern. So it makes it a lot easier to, to distinguish the pattern that way. Make sure you give them ample time to take the stamps and to do whatever they want with them on some paper because they're gonna want to, that's totally fine. You can also do patterns with objects. Here I have a whole bunch of gems. I wanted to show some Dollar Tree options. I've had these for years and you can do the same kind of patterns with these, just a physical object. You can do it with, you know, toys, with Legos, with matchbox cars, A, B, A, B, A, B, what comes next? Or clear, green, clear, green, clear, green, what comes next? And then one to one correspondence is also a really, really good early math skill. This is a Montessori 100 board. Once again, I have a whole video on how to actually use this and it's a great tool, but you can do an extension video on this, or excuse me, not video. You can do an extension activity using the Montessori 100 board if you pull together maybe even these little gems from the dollar store and you're placing one per square so this is a grid of 10 by 10 make it 100 obviously T placing these items on here is helping to show that one item one gem is in one space that is one so by placing these on here you can even count to one two three it's helping to demonstrate that one-to-one -one correspondence you can further this by using something like flashcards another one from Dollar Tree here. I picked these because on the other side of these number flashcards, they actually have objects on the back. Now you have a one-to-one -to, -one to an actual number. So two tomatoes or four blueberries five apples, and then you can start to demonstrate that this is two. Advancing past this, this is really advanced math here, is doing it without the one-to-one -one correspondence, placing these gems without seeing what the quantity is on the other side, and then turning it over to see if you're correct. I have some similar videos for toddler learning and preschool learning. I'm gonna put a couple of them on screen for you to go check out next. I will see you over there. Click subscribe to see more videos like this, and give me a thumbs up to show your love.